We are coming to you live, not live, but we're coming to you recorded here from the Tabernacle Church in Covington, right across the street from Covington High School. We're so excited that you decided to join us this morning to worship and to hear God's word preached. Uh, I just want to open us up in prayer and then I'm going to uh, lead off to our worship pastors. So Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord God. Father, we're so thankful God, to be a part of your family, Father, here in this world, to be able to represent you here in this world, Father, as as your light, Father. God, I just pray that you would encourage everybody that's with us this morning, that you would just give them your peace, Lord God, that you would bless their lives, Lord Jesus, God, as you just carry them through this time, Father. And we're so excited to be able to look ahead to when we get to come back together as a family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all go ahead and join us for worship. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Let's press in and praise the King of kings and Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. Amen. He holds our lives in his hands. Amen. He holds our future. We can trust him because he's faithful. Lord, we thank you that your mercies are new every day, Lord. We thank you that you are faithful and true, Lord. Have your way in our hearts today. Have your way in our lives, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging seas. You walk with me fire and heal all my disease and I trust in you and I trust in you yeah. I believe you're my healer I believe you are all I need. I believe you're my portion. I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all my every moment you calm my raging sea you walk with me through fire and heal all my disease and I trust Lord, I trust in you. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe you're I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world in your hands. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. I believe you're 
nothing I desire and nothing I desire compares with you nothing I desire nothing I desire Like you in the heavens or on the earth, there is no one like you in the heavens or on the earth. There is no one like you in the heavens or on the earth. There is no one like you in the heavens. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your peace, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your mercy and your kindness and your goodness, Lord. Hallelujah. There's truly none like you in all the earth, Lord. Hallelujah. We just praise your name this morning, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to speak to us this morning through your word, Jesus. God bless y'all, church. We love y'all. Hope to see you soon. Well, welcome to everyone. I want to thank you all again for joining us today at the Tabernacle Church in Covington. I, um, I pray that everybody's doing really well. I, I want to just encourage everyone just to be excited about the Lord. Uh, don't let the events or the circumstances that are around us um, distract us from who God is and what God has done and still continues to do for us today. So uh, God's church, God's people should be filled with uh, tremendous hope, tremendous joy. Um, God's still with us. God has not left us. Our salvation is still secure. Everything that God has done for us on the cross through his son Christ has not changed. So um, be of good cheer, be of good hope. Uh, God is with us. He's not against us. So um, as I begin today, I don't know about y'all, but um, I'm kind of getting a little tired of some of the words and phrases that we keep hearing. And of course, I watch the I try to watch the updates. I think I mentioned this a week or two ago um, of the president and the, uh, the task force team every day gives an update. And, um, and so, but you listen to the news and you read the reports and you kind of keep hearing some of the same words and phrases repeated over and over again. And um, they're getting kind of old. So one of them is quarantine. Um, I don't like the word quarantine. And then you keep hearing social distancing. Um, I don't like social distancing. And then they keep telling us to wear a face mask. And um, then they keep, this word, keep, this letters keep coming up that says PPE. And I'm still trying to figure out what PPE stands for. I don't know what that means. But th they keep telling us um, how important PPE -E is. And then they tell us to keep six feet apart. And um, so all of these things, um, I do understand and I agree that they're necessary and we have to do them, but to be quite honest with you, I'm ready to resume my normal life. I'm ready to wake up every day and go where I want to go and do what I want to do. And I think all of us, um, in, in part of all of us are at one point or another probably feeling the same thing. So hopefully we're getting real close to seeing the end of this. And um, but but again, just be encouraged and be of good cheer. So um, James chapter two, verse 23 says "And the scripture was fulfilled. That says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. And um, most people, I believe, if they're describing God or who God is or even a Christian or people who aren't Christians, if you ask them to describe the Lord and just give a couple of phrases of what would be the most meaningful word or phrase for you to describe who God is to them, I doubt that most of them would choose the word friend. And, um, but the Bible tells us um, that we are God's friends. Those of us who have accepted Christ, that have done as Abraham done, has trusted him and placed our faith in him, 
uh, the Bible says we are his friends. So I think that should be very um, comforting to us to know that the creator and the God of the universe calls us his friends. And, um, and he does. So, um, you know, uh, for me, that's very personal. It, it's more than just a, a feeling or a religious uh, form or formality. It, it brings it more of a, of a personal relationship that God actually calls us his friends. So um, that, that means if he's a friend of ours, that the Lord cares for us and he takes care of us. And um, the Bible in both the Old Testament and the New Testament uses the analogy of him being our shepherd. And um, today's message I've titled uh, The Great Shepherd of the Sheep. And um, today's message is going to serve as part one. And the next Sunday, we'll continue the uh, message in part two. But, but we're going to do something a little bit different um, today. And I hope this, this creativity helps make the service a little bit more enjoyable. Um, uh, to introduce my scripture, we put together a video reading of my scripture. And um, we have several different people that are reading each each going to be reading a different part of, 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 the, of the passage. So, um, so I believe that all of you will enjoy this. So right now we're going to go ahead and play this video. And then after the video, I'll continue my message. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows and leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. So what a beautiful scripture passage that is. And I just want to say I appreciate each of the readers that helped put that together. And I just want to personally say to all of them, thank you very much. And, um, and I, I, that made it very special and very unique for our service today. But, but as we read that scripture... Um, I just want to remind us that the Lord and no one else is your trust. Uh, we are, as Christians, commanded to place our trust in Him alone. And I, I believe the Lord will use circumstances, both good and bad, to cause us to place our trust in Him, including events like this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And I know in my life, when I've had challenges or trials or things that have come my way, those are the times that have caused me to lean on the Lord more than ever. But really, God wants us to lean on him and trust him no matter what your circumstances look like. Because God knows that he alone is our trust and he alone is our source. And um, so, you know, we can't put any confidence in this life. My wife and I was kind of just talking about the events and things that are happening, in, not just in our nation, but all across the world with this pandemic. And it just really shows us how fragile and how unstable this world really is, the, this life we live in, whether it's health or finances or whatever it is. I'm here to tell you that you cannot put your trust in man. You cannot put your trust in the things of men and governments and world systems. World systems and governments are extremely fragile and they're very, very unstable. We who love the Lord have him as our great shepherd. He is our friend. And today I want us in this passage in Psalm 23, which to a lot of us, I think that Psalms is very familiar to us. But I want us to be reminded of what it means for God to be our great shepherd. So in this passage of scripture, um, there are two images or figures of speech that really stand out in Psalm 23. And um, the first one is the Lord. And here the Lord is compared to a shepherd and the believer, the, the Christian or the believer, which is you and I, if, if we're saved, the believer is compared um, to a sheep. And um, so of all the animals um, that God could have compared us to, the one that he chose was sheep. But if you really understand um, the analogy and the understanding of the shepherd sheep relationship, 
you'll understand that that one fits us best. And um, see, sheep, um, sheep are not very intelligent. They have no direction, and they are completely dependent on someone else for their survival. And um, so we are sheep. That's the analogy that God gives us, and I'm sorry to tell you that. I think a lot of people would rather say, well, I wish God would have you know, chosen me to be an eagle or to be a lion or maybe to be a bear, some kind of big, aggressive, magnificent, majestic animal. But I'm sorry to tell you this, that God chose sheep, and that's what we are. And, um, but really, if you read Psalms 23, it really doesn't paint a pitiful picture of poor sheep Rather, we are seen as prominent and valuable in the eyes of the Lord, which is our shepherd. So we can't look at it from the, from the perspective that we're pitiful and weak and wretched. Rather, we, we look at it from the perspective that God gives us in this beautiful passage that we are cared for and we are loved and we are extremely, extremely important and we're very valuable. So from that standpoint, I believe the analogy fits perfectly for us. So just to kind of break this down today, I want to start in the first verse there, Psalms 23, verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. So the first thing I want us to look at today, and I want to do this, these parts here in, in the form of questions. And the first question I want to ask you today is, who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? See, the psalm is written by David, and if you read the Old Testament, uh, David is the king of Israel, and, um, but the shepherd analogy is no surprise as David himself was a shepherd. If you read the Bible and you read the beginnings of David's life when he first comes on the scene and God begins to raise him up and, and David eventually becomes uh, the king of Israel, you'll learn that David was a, was, a, was a shepherd. So the analogy that the Lord, that, that David is given here of a shepherd is no surprise here. But notice that David says the Lord is my shepherd. David is not teaching us. He's telling us for himself that the Lord is his shepherd. I think that's extremely important for us to, to realize this, that David had such a deep grasp and understanding of who the Lord was that David understood that he could just declare emphatically that the Lord is my shepherd. And um, the Hebrew word for shepherd um, and the Hebrew word for shepherd is rohi, R-O-H-I. It's one of God's names. One of God's names is Jehovah rohi, meaning the Lord, my shepherd. Now, this is important for us to, uh, to understand. Jehovah is the Hebrew word for the, for the, for the Lord in the Old Testament. And there's, there's several times, if you study the Bible, where the Bible gives compound words that give us a deeper meaning or understanding of who God is or who the Lord is. So this one here, Rohi, it says, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord, my shepherd. Another example of that, some of you might be familiar with, is Jehovah Nisi. That means the Lord is my banner. Um, another one that's real popular is Jehovah Shalom. And most people know what Shalom means. Shalom means what? It means peace. So when you say Jehovah Nisi, you're saying, Jehovah, the Lord is my banner. Or when you say, Jehovah, Shalom, you're saying, Jehovah, the Lord is my peace. So um, it just gives a tremendous um, meaning into that. And that's, an, I believe, if you've never studied that, if you have a chance to search that, it, it just gives such a great depth to the meaning of the Lord in our lives. But, but the shepherd analogy gives us this picture of the Lord in the life of David. David understood that the Lord was his provider, he was his protector, and the Lord was his commander. See, as a shepherd, David understood the role of the shepherd. He is stating that the Lord alone is his shepherd. And um, so I, I, can, I too can testify in my life in times of decision as a Christian, whether it was uh, jobs decisions, when I, when I was, had an opportunity to move or I needed to change a job or maybe in decisions I had to make with my finances or whether it came to important decisions like who I was going to marry, um, I can tell you and I can testify that the Lord has been my shepherd. The Lord has been my guide and the Lord is the one that I turn to. You know, a lot of people turn to different things when they're 
when they're confronted with, with big critical decisions. But I can tell you, my first thought, my first go-to is always the Lord. I'm, I'm always thinking, God, God what, are, what are you telling me to do with this? What, what direction are you asking me to go? What, what is it that the Lord is, is pushing me toward? And I can tell you, as a shepherd, he's, the Lord will never steer you or lead you in the wrong direction. But you have to allow him to be the shepherd of your life. One of, the, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Listen to how simple but how profound this scripture verse is. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. And I just love that scripture because it's so, it's so simple but it's so powerful. And the Bible says and the scripture says here, and I can tell you, in my life and in my family, I, I have done that. I have, I have sought to trust the Lord with all my heart. I have sought to lean on Him and not my own understanding. And I can tell you, when I have done that in my life, when I have sought the Lord first and, and made Him my shepherd, made Him my guide, I can tell you that the promise of that Scripture is true, that He has made my path straight and clear and direct. So that, that scripture is, is, is one of those scriptures where it's a beautiful scripture, but you have to be willing to exercise faith for, to, for it to happen. And the faith here is you have to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So to get the, the, to get the straight path, you have to be willing to exercise faith and say, God, I'm placing my trust and faith in you as my shepherd. And I can tell you I've done that and that God has, God has always made my path straight. See, the world has a lot of shepherds. There's a lot of, there's a lot of shepherds in the world today trying to guide and lead the flock or the, the, or the, the, the groups of people or people in the world in different directions. There, there's, the, there's the shepherd of money. You know, a lot of people base all their decisions in their life or most of their decisions on their money. Some people have shepherds that are friends, and, and, and sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes that's a bad thing. Some people um, allow the government or government systems to become their shepherd. Uh, some people allow religion or religious systems to become their shepherds. And, but the Bible says there's only, there's only one shepherd that's good, and his name is Jesus. Jesus himself declared, I am the good shepherd. So we, we can take solace and comfort in knowing that not only is God a shepherd, but the Bible says he's a good shepherd. So um, you can choose to place your faith and trust in many shepherds, but I'm here to tell you today to seek the only shepherd that really cares about your life, to seek the only shepherd that really wants to provide for you and protect you and direct you in a good way. That good shepherd is the Lord. And then notice what David says in the verse there. He says, David said, I have all that I need. He, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And I, I think that is so refreshing and so peaceful. That, and um, some translations say that scripture passage or verse. They say, I shall not lack. In other words, God's love and his protection and his provision is perfect. You need to grasp that. David understood that that, that the Lord, as his shepherd, was everything that David needed. He, he lacked nothing. He, he lacked no good thing. The, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And um, that is just a beautiful picture of God being a shepherd. See, as David being a physical shepherd for sheep, David understood if he was a good shepherd, then the sheep, that's all the sheep needed. They didn't need anything else but, but a shepherd that was willing to stand for them, love them, protect them, uh, care for them, do all of those things, provide for them. David understood that. See, um, the sheep are 100% dependent on the shepherd for everything. And so too are we. And the Bible tells us that the Lord is perfect. His provision, His protection is perfect. So God is not a shepherd that 
you, that, that comes to us and where well, you might need him in, in certain times of your life. No, the Bible tells us that the Lord is your shepherd now. No matter what your life is facing, whether you have plenty or have nothing, whether your circumstances are good or bad, in your condition now, today, the, the, the way, the, whoever you are right now watching this, the very state of your life now, the Bible tells us the Lord is your shepherd and you have all that you need. So that's, that's extremely important for us to understand that. See, people who live their life seemingly empty and confused, they are never content or satisfied. And you, you witness this. You may have experienced that in your life personally where you're, you're, you're anxious, you're, you're, you're never satisfied no matter what position you get at your job or how big the house is or how good the kids are, that it always seems to be something that's unsettled in your spirit and you're never satisfied, you're never content. And I believe the reason for that for most people is that they are trusting in the wrong shepherd. When you trust in God, as David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I, I want for nothing. I lack for nothing. I, I can promise you and I can testify that you will be satisfied, that you will be content. So can you say personally, as David did, the Lord is my shepherd. The next thing we want to look at is verse 2 here, Psalms 23, verse 2. It says, he lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. And the next question I want to ask you is, what is your source for rest and peace? What is your source for rest and peace? For David, he is the Lord. David said that he, he lets me rest and he leads me besides quiet meadows. Other translations of this verse say, he makes me lie down, or it says he provides me rest, or it says he offers me rest. See, remember, the Lord is a good shepherd, and he will only lead us to green meadows and peaceful streams if we let him. See, this obviously is, a, is an analogy. It's a, it's a word picture that David's, that David's given us of a, of, a, of a condition that we can experience in our lives if we will allow the Lord to truly be our shepherd, the analogy that David gives is a beautiful picture of green meadows, of lush, lush green meadows and quiet, gentle, peaceful, flowing streams. That, that can be the analogy or the illustration of what your life can look like if you place your trust in the Lord as your shepherd. So the Lord can lead us or provide peace and rest, I believe, in at least three areas or ways. And these are the ways here in his presence, his word, and his spirit. Other translations of this verse also say he makes me lie down in green pastures or he leads me beside the still water. See, David here in this psalm, and you got to get the vision in your mind as you're reading it, David's painting a picture here. And he's painting a picture of complete peace and rest and can you imagine the contentment of the sheep? Here they are. They don't know where to go for food. Remember, sheep are not very intelligent. They have no direction. They have no insight. But they have this shepherd that's willing to stand in with them, protect them, provide for them. And now here they are. The, the shepherd leads them to lush meadows. He leads them to quiet streams. Imagine the sheep. They're in they're at total rest. They're in, they're in total peace and total contentment. And that's the picture that God wants you and I to have as his sheep, as his children, that you and I too can enjoy that beautiful picture of rest and peace. But that source is found only in the Lord. So Isaiah uh, 40, 30 and 31, it says, Even youths go tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. And they will walk and not be faint. So the first thing here we need to see is we need to rest in his presence. See, it says those who hope or another translation says those who wait or those who put their confidence in the Lord. Those who put their confidence in the Lord, the Bible says they will they will grow tired. Even youths grow tired and weary, but but it says those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
So we have to place our confidence and our trust in the Lord. See, as a believer, you can experience real rest and peace when you are walking in the awareness of God's presence in your life. And I, I just want you to think about this for a moment as a, as a Christian. If you're a Christian, you have the... Do you have the indwelling power of the presence of God residing in you, the Bible says? And we need to, as believers, train ourselves in the course of a day or in the course of our life, we need to train ourselves to have an understanding and an awareness that God's presence is always with us. No matter where you're at, you could be at work, you could be at home, you could be going through a difficult situation, you could be persecuted, whatever. No matter where you find yourself, as a believer, the Bible says God's presence never leaves us. So I believe it will train ourselves to know and understand and have an awareness that God, God, God is actively involved and in, in, your, in your, 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 your life. I believe that will give you tremendous rest and tremendous peace. Then Psalms 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp. For my feet, a light on my path. The next thing is we have peace in his word. See, David said that he leads me besides green meadows or he leads me to green pastures and to quiet streams. By his word is how we are led in that direction as Christians. See, the word for us, for us as his sheep, is our food and our nourishment. By his words, we live and act. The Bible says Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. God's word is, is our very life. It's our very nourishment. The, Jesus said that man shall not live on bread alone, but by the very word of God. So the word of God for a sheep or for a believer, for us, becomes our nourishment. It becomes, it becomes our rest. It becomes our peace. But, but we must choose we must choose God's word to lead us. We must allow the word of God to direct us. We must not only read his word, but we must decide after reading the Bible that we are going to put into practice what the Bible says. You know, a lot of people, um, maybe they say they read the Bible or they study the Bible, but really the Bible will never have any impact at all on your life unless you are willing to, to actively place what it says into your life and, and do what it's telling you to do. So, um, but the word of God can become your peace because God's word becomes a source of direction. It becomes a source that guides us. See, the shepherd had to protect the sheep. He had to keep the sheep from uh, being harmed by other, by other animals that wanted to come and, 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 and destroy the sheep. And the Bible says his, God's word is our protection. God's word is your guide. That's how your life is, is grounded and protected when you live according to the word of God. And then in Galatians chapter 5, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Here we see we have peace in his spirit. We have peace in his spirit. Before that passage in Galatians, it says those who are led by the spirit. In other words, those who have the Holy Spirit in their lives and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you if you are a Christian. The Bible says that those who are led by the spirit, those who allow the Holy Spirit to direct their lives, to guide their lives. The Bible says these things will be the evidence that you were led by his spirit. And then they're all beautiful things. They're, they're love, they're joy, peace, patience, all the things that, that, we, that we really want and long for in our lives. The Bible says we have them by God's Holy Spirit, but we have to be led by his Holy Spirit. So are you walking in his spirit? Are you allowing the shepherd, the Lord, to guide you and to, to, to rest and to peace? If you do so, then the picture that David's painting in Psalms 23 can be your life. And then in verse 3 in Psalms 23, it says, He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. The next question I want to ask you is, are you being restored by the shepherd? 
Are you being restored by the shepherd? Other translations for this verse say he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. See, this is the primary purpose for the shepherd is to get the sheep back in line. See, that, that's the main thing that makes sheep so dangerous is they have no sense of direction. They have no understanding of, of what they're doing. They just literally just, just walking around in their life with no awareness and no comprehension or understanding of the danger that's all around them. So they need a shepherd. They need, they need a shepherd to keep them together, to keep them in a, in, a, in a safe place. Well, the same thing is true for us because as sheep, we stray. We go astray. And I don't know about you, but even after I became a Christian, I still have tendencies that lead me astray, that, that the sinful flesh wants me, to, wants me to stray away from the shepherd, wants me to stray away from the Lord. But the Bible says that God restores us. He, he brings us back into the fold. He, he restores us back. The Bible says he leads us into paths of righteousness. And this, this is an indication that the sheep or us, we have walked off the path, maybe into some secret sin, maybe into something that a spirit of rebellion or something that we've done. We, we've walked away from God. But the Bible says God as our good shepherd. He restores our souls. He brings us back into the fold. He, he cares for us so much that even when we wander off, he goes and gets us, the Bible says, and he brings us back unto himself. Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the word repent or they hear the word repentance, they begin to cringe and they begin to think, ooh, well, that word repent. But look at this, this scripture verse here where it says, repentance is simply turning back to God. When we, we acknowledge that we made a mistake, we acknowledge we did wrong. So in my acknowledgement, I'm saying, you know what? I made a mistake. I'm turning back to God. I'm going to repent. That's all it is. It's, it's very simple. We've made it very complicated, but it's not. But look what this verse says. So that your sins may be wiped out. In other words, your sins will be forgiven. And then it says that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Or times of refreshing may come from the shepherd. See, that's, that's God's desire. When, 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 we, when we walk away, God gently nudges us back by his word. And then we come in agreement with the word of God. We acknowledge, yes, God, we've made a mistake. And then the Bible says God lovingly takes us back into his arms as a shepherd would do to his sheep when the sheep goes astray. And then the Bible says times of refreshing may come, that we are refreshed. Why? Because we're forgiven. We're, we've been restored. See, that's the beautiful picture that David is painting for us as the great shepherd that we have in the Lord. See, that's the shepherd restoring our soul through forgiveness. So praise God that the shepherd cares for us even when we go astray. And that may be, you may be listening to this now and maybe you might say, well, you know, there was a time in my life where I was baptized, maybe at a younger age, or I gave my life to the Lord, but, but for whatever reason, I strayed. I, I, I walked away. I, I left the Lord. I, I, I got away. Well, I'm here to tell you that the Lord is a good shepherd. And even if you strayed away, you can never get too far away that God cannot come and grab you and bring you back into the fold because he loves you and he wants to restore your life. See, David has painted in this scripture verse, and this is just the first three verses. We're going to look at the next three verses next Sunday. But here in this beautiful Psalms 23, David has painted for us a beautiful picture of our great shepherd keeping his sheep, you and I, safe and at peace. It's a picture of God's security, of God's provision, of God's protection. So, again, I just want to ask you, who's your shepherd? Who are you allowing to direct your life? What is your source? What is your go-to when you make decisions in your life? Then what is your source for peace? What do you lean on? What do you go to to bring satisfaction and contentment in your life? And then are you allowing the shepherd to restore you? If you've strayed from the fold, if you've wandered away from God, are you allowing God in his gentle, loving way to just embrace you and restore you back unto himself? I'm here to tell you that the Lord 
is not only a shepherd, but the Bible says he's a great shepherd. He, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And God's desire is for us to be with him that he can love us and protect us and provide for us. So I think that's an encouraging scripture. Psalms 23 is so powerful. It's packed with so much uh, understanding and, and, and insight into God, into who God is as our shepherd in our lives. So I pray that that message today gave each of you comfort, it gave you hope, it gave you rest, and it gave you joy. Praise God. So as I close today, I just want to pray for salvation. If there's anybody that's uh, watching this um, today and you, you're looking at me and you saying, I don't know if Jesus is my shepherd. I've never, I've never really confessed Christ. I've never really surrender my life to him, but I want to do it today. Well, I'll lead you in a prayer right now, and if that's you watching this, God will hear your prayer, and God will save you. God will fill you with the Spirit, and God will change your life. So if that's you today, and you say, I want to surrender my life. I want to give Jesus control of my life. I want, I want Jesus to be my shepherd today. Then I'll lead you in this prayer right now. You can just pray with me. Just say, Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. And on the third day, you were raised to walk in newness of life. And Jesus, today, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you are, Je that you are Lord. And God, this day, I surrender my life and my will to your control. Jesus, I understand that I'm just a sheep. I need a shepherd I'm giving you control of my life to be the shepherd of my life. But, but Jesus, I'm weak. I need your Holy Spirit. Send me the power of your Holy Spirit to give me the power I need to live this life for you. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if that's you today, I promise you, God heard your prayer. God has touched you. God has saved you. And God loves you. I just want to direct you now as we close to an information slide. We close with this slide every week. And this is just some information about, um, about we, just want, we, we want to hear from you. Um, we, want to, we want to hear from, especially for those of you who are new to us. And so you can go to our um, website there at wpt.church uh, forward slash new. And if you have any prayer requests, if you're new to the tabernacle, you have anything you want us to, to pray for, whatever, there's a place for you to go on online and fill that out. Um, if some of you want to give, if you want to give online, we've made that very simple for you to do online. You can go to wpt.church forward slash Covington and you can click the button there that says it either says donate or give. And it's very simple for you to give or to donate online. And then for those of you who choose to do so, and you want to send in your donation by mail, you can send it to 73202 East Stadium Drive in Covington. And the zip is 70433. And also you can follow us on Facebook at WPT Cub, uh, on Instagram, and also on YouTube. So again, I just want to thank everybody for, for taking the time to tune in today and listen to this. I know you have a lot of options online, and, and I we are very excited here at the Tabernacle Church that you chose us um, to listen to today. So God bless you as you go today and be of great comfort that you have a great shepherd in the Lord.